In this video, you'll learn how to add a camera 2D to your game and to set it up to accommodate your cinematic needs. You'll learn about various settings that come with the camera and how to effectively use them for your game. Howdy, and welcome to Game Endeavor. Cameras are an essential tool for a majority of games. More often than not, you will have built a vast world for your player and will need to allow them to explore it. But it is crucial that you set up your camera correctly because failing to do so is a quick and easy way to ruin all of the hard work you've put into your game. Jerky camera movement can leave the player feeling nauseous, or camera movement that is too slow can lag behind the player and irritate them. Godot comes with a pre-built camera that we can instantiate to any node. Once the camera has been parented to a node, it will follow that node as it moves around the game, but it isn't enabled by default. You will need to go into its inspector and enable the current checkbox property before it will start rendering. This allows you to have multiple cameras in a scene that you can switch between, which can be useful for setting up cutscenes and action shots. There can only be one camera set as the current. Enabling current for any other camera will disable current for this camera. By default, the camera comes with a dead zone in the middle of the screen. This dead zone is known as the drag margin. This is an area where the parent object can move within it without causing the camera's viewport to move with it. As mentioned before, jerky, unexpected, or unwarranted camera movement may cause some players to feel nauseous or uneasy when they play your game. The dead zone is a way to reduce this by minimizing camera movement when changing directions, especially as the player jumps up and down or if they need to make small backtracks. This is extremely important if your game has wall climbing in it. It is very unpleasant to have the camera swaying back and forth every time the player leaps from the wall. As nice as this feature is though, it comes with a natural flaw. You'll notice that as the player runs, the camera is centered behind them, which means the camera is showing more of what's behind the player than what's in front of them. This leaves your player with less reaction time when dodging enemies and hazards, and it looks odd for most games. In the next video, we will optimize the camera for platformers as demonstrated here. There will be an iCard and a link in the description below. If you're interested in platformer games, then this is a must watch as it will drastically increase the quality of the camera. The drag margins can be adjusted in the drag margin drop down menu. Here you will find a setting for the size of the top, bottom, left and right margins. You can set this to a value between 0 and 1 which represents the size of the dead zone relative to the camera's position. It's worth noting that the drag margin doesn't just apply to the parent node's position, but also to its own global position. If, in a script, I change the camera's global position, then so long as that movement remains within the dead zone, then it will not cause the camera to move. If your camera isn't supposed to follow a specific character or object, such as in a top-down strategy game, but instead you're allowing the player to control the camera directly with either the mouse or keys, then you will want to disable the drag margins altogether. This can be done in the drag margin checkboxes in the inspector. There is an option for H and V for horizontal and vertical respectively. This will make it so that the camera's viewport is set precisely to its position. To prevent sudden jerky movement in your game, you can use the smoothing that comes with the cameras. This is applied automatically to the viewport anytime the camera's position changes. This counts for movement from the camera as it follows its parent node, but also if you change its position in any way. There's a checkbox to enable this in the smoothings drop down tab, as well as a speed variable to apply to the smoothing, which is defaulted to 5. The higher this value, the quicker and more responsive the smoothing is, with the lower values being slower and more sluggish. Finding the balance that's right for your game can be tricky. You don't want it to be so fast that you can't notice it, but you also don't want it to be so slow that you can't help but notice it. Also keep in mind that the lower the value is, the more it will lag behind the player. This will cause an issue similar to the dead zone that I mentioned earlier, where the camera is centered behind the player and doesn't show them much of what's in front of them. Often, when you're using the camera, you will want to limit it so that it cannot go beyond your designated game world. The camera comes with built-in boundaries. These boundaries are always enabled, but by default are set to a ridiculous value of 10 million pixels in each of the four directions. If we go into the editor drop-down menu, then there's an option to draw our limits. Enable that, and then change the limits to something more local, and you will see a yellow box that shows the bounds that your camera will be limited to. The width and height of the camera's viewport is taken into consideration, including the zoom level. If you are setting the limits manually, then there are rulers on the top and the left of the scene display window that will help you by displaying the pixel measurements. The major ticks of the ruler are based on the snap settings. 
So if you need to adjust these for your tile set, then click on the three dots in the top bar of the scene display, configure snap, and set the grid step to whatever size you need. But if you instead want to automatically set the limits to the bounds of your tile map, then it is possible to get its used area. Tile maps have a method called get use rect, which will return a rect 2 containing the upper left and bottom right corners. If you multiply this with the tile map's cell size property, then this will tell you what to set your camera's limits to. Getting your camera just right is a major step in polishing your game. It has a massive impact on the look and feel of your game. So experiment with cameras to see what kind of fun things you can do. And if you'd like to continue learning game programming, then check out this video here. And if you're new, then join the sub club to get notified for future videos. And until next time, y'all take it easy.